Hey guys, this video is going to be kind of a remake of a video that I had posted on my old channel, the Bass Thump and Tweon channel, uh, where I did an overview of my No Weld Grinder Sander. Uh, and I just wanted to make another one to put on this channel uh, and also go over a few changes that I've made since that video. Uh, so, what you're looking at here is the No Weld Grinder Sander, aka the NWGS, uh, designed by Tracy Mickley of Mickley Knives. He also has uh, his own web store, usaknifemaker.com, uh, where you can get both the plans and several, if not all, of the parts, minus the motor uh, for this sander. Uh, most of these parts I did source locally, though I did use his store uh, to get a handful of things, such as the wheels, the pulleys, and a little bit of the tubing. Uh, I believe he also has an eBay store uh, where you can also get the plans and I paid about $25 shipped for them and you get a hard copy with very detailed plans, uh, definitely enough to make this uh, without any trouble. Uh, all in all it's a very good sander, uh, I haven't had any problems with it, I would say it's as usable as any professional sander that you would use uh, and it's very versatile as well. And uh, I probably built this for under $600. Uh, I would say probably about $550 for a functional sander uh, with a contact wheel. Uh, and then obviously the, each attachment costs a little bit more. Uh, but this is definitely well under the cost of uh, any new production sander uh, that you would find. Uh, you may be able to find something a little bit cheaper if you design it yourself but uh, this is definitely a great design in my opinion. Uh, I'll give you some specs on this real quick. Uh, it's using a Dayton motor that I got used for under $100. Uh, this has one and a half horsepower. I'll run into just a regular single pole switch there. Uh, this is running off a 120. Uh, perhaps in the future I'll change it to a 220. Uh, that would probably be a little bit more efficient and just better all around. Uh, but right now, this is definitely working uh, quite well. Uh, I do have a three-step pulley. This gives me three speeds, uh, kind of a low, medium, and high, uh, which is really enough for what I'm doing right now. Uh, I would like a variable speed uh, VFD uh, that I could slow down to almost zero and uh, speed up uh, to maximum. But uh, those are quite a bit of money and uh, several times the cost of what I... Uh, <clears throat> spent to build this. So right now uh, this will definitely keep me going for a while. Uh, as you can see we do have a tool rest socket uh, to the left of the tool arms. Uh, I also use this for my small arm attachment just because that's how it works out uh, because of the width of it. I'm just using uh, regular uh, 3 8 threaded handles there. Uh, I kind of made my own tracking knob here using an eye bolt. Uh, this works very well. Uh, I get a lot of leverage on that. I uh, used a door spring. Uh, pretty stout. Uh, tying to the uh, pivot arm here. And uh, the only thing I really did different than the plans, uh, I did use thicker uh, flat stock for my brackets. Uh, his call for 8 inch. Uh, I believe I used 3 16 inch just so there would be less flex in them. And also I did thicken up the base tube. Uh, he uses eighth inch. I used a quarter just to give it a little bit more mass and a little more uh, stability perhaps. Although eighth inch would have been uh, perfectly acceptable. So that's kind of the overview. Right now I have the flat platen on here that I made myself based off of Beaumont Metals design. Uh, just milled it out of some quarter inch plate uh, using some sanders and files and whatnot. Uh, this will pivot 45 degrees in either direction. Uh, as you can see, I usually keep it at 90. Uh, and then I have the flat platen attached here, uh, which is just a piece of 3 8 stock mild steel. Uh, I am going to get a piece of glass to line this with very soon. 
Uh, but as you can see, this is easily removable for a slack belt attachment, uh, which works very well as well. I do have some other attachments that I've made to go with this, including a small wheel attachment uh, using some oscillating sander spindles. Uh, this one is a three-quarter spindle. Uh, and then I have the eight-inch contact wheel down there. Uh, I also have more spindles on my shelf there, uh, I believe. Uh, there's a one-inch, two-inch, uh, three-inch, and then maybe an inch and a half. So I've got a few sizes there to choose from. I mostly just use the smallest spindle, which is a three-quarter. And uh, I can maybe even take that off and uh, maybe wrap some electrical tape or something similar around it for a half-inch spindle. But uh, the three-quarter is perfect for finger choils and other things. Uh, and I can even grind out a little bigger with it if I need to uh, without changing to the next bigger size. I uh, also have a tool table down here. We can go ahead and uh, get that on there. I apologize, I am kind of doing this one handed. Uh, I did recently extend my tool table to give a little more reach from side to side when uh, grinding my bevels. Uh, this also adjusts up and down and left and right if needed. Uh, go ahead and turn it on real quick just to show you. As you can see, it's not too awful loud uh, compared to some other grinders. Uh, you can easily track the belt left and right. works extremely well. Uh, I have all Beaumont metal uh, wheels on there. Uh, those are extremely high quality uh, as well as the 8 inch contact wheel. That's from Beaumont Metal Works as well. Uh, a little bit pricey. Uh, I forget what I paid for that uh, but it was very steep. I think more than $200 uh, which I think is a little excessive uh, for what you're getting. Uh, I mean, it's not like it was machined by hand. Uh, it was mass produced on a CNC machine uh, and sent out uh, to have the rubber uh, vulcanized there. Uh, though it is a very high quality wheel, does great grinds, very well balanced. So I suppose, in a sense, it was worth the money. Uh, although I can't imagine uh, that the materials alone. Uh, as well as the process cost to that much. But uh, anyway, uh, maybe one day we'll get the Beaumont small wheel attachment, uh, which is maybe a little nicer than what I got, but that's definitely uh, functional for now. And uh, that's basically the overview of the sander. Uh, if anybody has any questions on the building process or uh, anything I did to mine, uh, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, also feel free to rate and or subscribe if you have not already and uh, there will be plenty more knife making and knife making related videos to come uh, as well as some repeats for my other channel as far as tool overviews go so uh, until next time that's all for now I'll talk to you guys later